I've mentioned Byron Bay, and this comes to mind. Relaxation. Surfing. A carefree lifestyle. And maybe a bit of film style spotting. But traditionally, Byron Bay and the surrounding Northern Rivers region was known for its fertile farming land. Just 10 minutes from the tourist mecca, the Brook family have been growing macadamia since the late 1980s. The soils are superb. 23 million years ago, up the road, Mount Warning, massive caldera, massive volcano, for three million years, blew this lava and came down this way. And eventually the basalt turned into this rich, incredibly um, beautiful red soils. It was a dairy farm for 100 years before the Brooks transformed it by planting 35,000 macadamia trees and returning some of the 40 hectares to rainforest. They have since extended the business into food and beverage manufacturing, creating Brook Farm, known for its muesli products, and the Cape Byron Distillery, employing around 100 people. The vast majority of that are all locals. It takes time to learn how to make muesli. Like, while it sounds simple, it's quite technical to make so you can't just sort of fly and fly out. And the same is obviously the case with, with our whiskey and our gin. It, it, it takes time, so we want to make sure that we're creating jobs that are longer-term jobs, not just transient, which is certainly a challenge in Byron Bay, but a challenge that we're happy to take on. There is a real sense of a growing beverage and food manufacturing hub happening in the local industrial estate. One of those is the Byron Bay Cookie Company, established in 1990. It began as a market store, pickles, pies and petticoats, before moving to the now heaving industrial estate in 1993. It was very different to what it is today. Uh, it's not the destination that it has become. So I guess we were one of the first manufacturing businesses to settle in and we're still here today. A million cookies a year come out of the bakehouse, employing 80 staff in peak season. This company's success piqued the interest of investors. It's not the same couple who initially founded it in 1990. It's now owned by Rinaldi, which is one of Australia's oldest food manufacturing businesses, a family-owned business based in Melbourne. But they take the bar and name very seriously. That's something that's important to us. We're proud of the fact that we started in Byron Bay. We're still baked in Byron Bay. That's a question that we get all the time. Are you still baked in Byron? Yes, we are. We use local ingredients whenever we can, whenever it's possible. Our staff is mainly local, and that's important to us. Another Byron Bay success story from the industrial park is Brewery Stone and Wood. Established in 2008 by three locals, the craft brewery saw massive growth and spread to nearby Mwollomba. In 2021, it was sold to international brewing giant, Lion. Head of supply chain, Richie Crow, says they employ up to 150 people over several sites. Even with new international ownership, he insists the company stays connected to its local roots and the community. Whilst we've grown and been able to reach more drinkers and customers, um, some things never change, and us being a key part of the Northern Rivers, as well as our conscious business principles, um, are very important to us. We absolutely team up with local producers, whether it's a collaboration on a limited release. In other examples, we actually make, in this brewery, a malt-based whiskey wash, which is used by brookies down the road and um, they're making fantastic whiskies with it. So we're really proud of their success as well. These booming businesses have created hundreds of jobs for workers who need somewhere to live. It begs the question, how can the region retain its natural attributes and proud farming history? You've got this weird balance between rainforest, farming and now residential land. How is that working? 
Well, it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, you've got the most picturesque area in Australia, we think. We're a bit biased. It's not the world. I mean, it really is it's stunning. It's quite beautiful, but almost the most fertile soils. It's like you should put a stick in the ground and something's going to grow. So there's a balance and that tension, I guess, with that residential and the farming side of things. And we, we see that basically every day in our business. There's no doubt that living in the New South Wales Northern Rivers region would be a dream come true for a lot of people. But there could be wider health implications associated with trading traditional farming lands for residential development. Late last year, the region's food security was the focus of a New South Wales Department of Health roundtable in Ballina, 35 k's south of Byron. Fiona Berry is a researcher at the Institute of Sustainable Futures at the University of Technology in Sydney. She's previously studied the encroachment of urban development on Sydney's food bowl and is now looking at threats to farming in the Northern Rivers region. It's been going on for many years and in the Northern Rivers and in a lot of regional areas in Australia there's been a trend of tree changes moving to the area. There's been uh, people seeking out uh, lifestyle choices that um, might involve hobby farming or um, yeah, buying up uh, land that was previously agricultural and using it for residential purposes, which is, um, which is great, but unfortunately it comes at a cost for food production and food supply to the region. Fiona says the increased migration coupled with recent natural disasters in the area is a threat to food production and the health of residents. It unfortunately uh, leaves regions such as ours very vulnerable um, to uh, food supply during a crisis. The high cost of living is another factor um, that means that food is not accessible, not affordable, and often it results in um, people needing to um, needing to look for less healthy options uh, that are more affordable. So it has flow on effects to health of the population. Small farm advocate Joel Orch, who supports new growers getting into food production, attended the round table. He thinks policy change is needed to protect farmers, both new and more established. There are far too many incidences of young people that set up farms on leased land only to be sort of shafted through you know, land sale or other circumstances. There's nothing that protects the land user um, on, in a lease. And real estate around here sort of flips so quickly that no one has sort of these long-term solutions that you know, food security really depends on. Um, coming up with some creative solutions around how to pull our prime agricultural land and you know, state significant farmland out of this real estate market, I think is really important. And um, again, like we just don't need to create new models. There's land access solutions and capital access solutions working really well elsewhere in the world. The farm in Byron Bay was set up in 2014 and offers small plots to lease on 30 hectares of rich farming land. I'll take you on a tour today. I'm going to run through some of the farming principles, how it works, who's here and what we're doing. General Manager Andy Coburn says the farm's ethos is to grow, feed, educate and be positive custodians of the land. The majority of the farmers here are young farmers, landless farmers, and people who are at the start of their farming career. So we have a collective of about 11 farmers on site, and that is the, the, there's a real diversity of farming here. So diversification is a really big part of this farm, and we have someone doing pigs, someone doing cattle, someone doing chickens, looking at eggs, and then we've got a number of different growers on site, and they grow in different ways. The farm offers traditional market gardens all the way to agroforestry, where trees and shrubs are grown amongst crops. It's left to individuals on what they want to grow, as long as it aligns with regenerative farming. Emily Headlam has been growing her market garden here for the past year. And what about the serenity? I know, isn't it? Look at this. <laughs> I mean, when you think of a farm, this isn't really what you think of, is it? No, not usually. My plot here is only half an acre, so it's really small. Yeah. Um, but there is a real need to have more small growers around, and we can't be reliant on 
on big farms for, for much longer, you know, with the cost of everything going up, if we have really long supply chains, it's a real problem. Well, what are you growing and then selling, I suppose? So I'm growing a mixture of summer crops at the moment, so tomatoes, chard, basil. Carrots? Carrots, lots of carrots, beetroot, uh, cucumbers, zucchini. The preservation of farming land is top of mind for Will Brook, second generation farmer and CEO of Brook Farm. Farming is so key to Australia and so key to Australia's future that if we don't take a long-term preservation view of that and see it as extremely valuable, like once you lose it, you never get it back. So if you're talking about a developer that's just after that cash grab, let's say, and if that's going to be at the cost of prime farming land, yeah, it's certainly not something that I'm a big fan of. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> their pursuit to revitalise the land has led to some interesting products coming out of their distillery. Son Eddie Brook believes in using as much local produce as possible, with many of the botanics for their gin coming from the replanted rainforest. I know. It comes under that main purpose of us trying to create spirits that represent the flavour of the rainforest from northern rivers, from Byron Bay. So first came our dry gin, then came our slow gin, Byron slow gin, but we use the native Davidson plum, the Jerseyana, which is endemic to northern rivers. Um, uh, and that's a beautiful rainforest plum, so we steep that into our gin. The Davidson plum may be a native wonder, but it's not for the faint-hearted. Cross between a lemon and a sour warhead with blood pink colour inside. Amazing. Are you going to try and make me eat this? I am so going to make you eat that. It doesn't smell. There we go. No, no. Oh, OK. Yep. <laughs> wow. Sour? Well, I nearly fell over it. So <laughs> Amazing. That's incredible. And it gets pinker and pinker the riper it gets, like a sheer Pirelli pink. Ooh. It's amazing. Yeah. Gets all your glands going, doesn't it? it high vitamin C, you mm. know, so good for you. Antioxidants, gonna, you know, it's an energy vitamin blast. While national and international tourists continue to flock to Byron Bay, the Brook family want people to be mindful of the region's future. When people come to Byron, of course, they think of the beaches, you know, swimming and things, but they also remark how green, how beautiful it is, the pasture, the trees. So, you know what? It's agriculture that's preserving the greenness, and we don't want it to become concrete.